Yo, what's going on everyone? It's me, it's Kangensula. I hope you're having a good day. Welcome to today's Pokemon Go video. And today we're going to be doing a tier list for every single community day that we've had up until April 2024. Now, in a couple of days, we're going to be getting the announcement for April 2024 Community Day, and we do not know what Pokemon that Community Day is going to feature and what the Community Day move is going to be. But for this video, I'm going to be looking at every single one that we've had so far, and I think there's a couple of these that are major standouts, and if you have them in your collection, you're definitely going to get really far in Pokemon Go, regardless of whatever game mode you're focusing on. So yeah, let's get right into it. Let's start off with Bulbasaur. This of course was in the early days of Community Days and I'm actually going to put this in the C tier. This is uh, a fairly decent Community Day, like Bulbasaur evolves into Venusaur, Venusaur gets Frenzy Plant, and that move definitely elevates Venusaur into the top tier when it comes to grass types. But however, there are so many really good grass types and Venusaur tends to be really squishy. The only value you get out of Venusaur is going to be with the Mega Evolution. Now, there is of course the Ultra League and I also think the Great League where Venusaur might be really good. So you know what, I'm actually going to put this in the B tier because Venusaur does have a lot of uses. So, you know, Venusaur with Frenzy Plant, that could actually get you pretty far. So yeah, maybe it's not C tier, but it is definitely B tier. Let's move on to Char's Charmander. Charmander Community Day, not Charizard. Well, it does evolve into Charizard. I'm gonna put this in the A tier, mainly because Charizard with the Community Day moves is actually really good. I'm talking about Blast Burn. We'll get into the next Community Day. It actually had two Community Days, but the first time around it got Blast Burn that actually elevated it quite a bit. Now, for the cold criteria of this tier list, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the impact that the move gave to the Pokemon, as well as the gameplay. I think that's a good way to go about it, considering that, like for example, Bulbasaur, in and of itself, not really good. But Venusaur with Frenzy Plant is actually really good. Charmander, same deal. Charizard with Blast Burn is phenomenal for both PvE and PvP content, especially in PvP. I think Ultra... I think like Ultra League and Great League with Charizard, like it's phenomenal. So you do not want to miss out on that. Char Blast Burn is just that good. Now let's also talk about Dragon Claw. So Charmander actually got two community days and the second time around it got a fast attack which is Dragon Claw. I think Dragon Claw is pretty good. It's almost on par with Blast Burn in terms of what impact it gave Charizard. Obviously, it's not going to make it great for PvE, unless of course you're using that one Mega Evolution that gives it a Dragon type, but Charizard with Dragon Claw is phenomenal for the Go Battle League. Like in the Ultra League, you're generating a ton of energy, you're destroying certain Pokemon that you would typically be weak against. Yeah, Charizard with Dragon Claw is insane. And then of course it also has a Dragon type charge attack, Dragon Breath, or Dragon Claw is the charge attack and Dragon Breath is the fast attack. I actually think it got Dragon Claw. Um, I think it got the second charge attack. I actually do not know, but it got a Dragon type attack, made it really good in PvP. I have to go back and check the facts there, but still, I would consider that Charizard with both community day moves, really strong Pokemon, definitely A tier. But next, let's move on to Chikorita. Unfortunately for Chikorita fans, I'm going to say this is, uh, I wouldn't consider it a trash tier. I wouldn't consider it a D tier. I'm going to put it in the C tier. The reason for that is because the evolved form, Menagium, with uh, Frenzy Plant, that's actually really good for the Great League. You do not want to discount that. It's actually phenomenal for a lot of specialty cups because it also comes with Earthquake. That is a very strong one-two punch, Frenzy Plant and Earthquake. You're definitely going to win out in a lot of different matchups. And then for Cyndaquil, I'm going to put this in the D tier, unfortunately. Cyndaquil with Blast Burn, uh, Typhlosion with Blast Burn is actually pretty good, but it's not going to be as impactful as the other starters, in my opinion. There's going to be a lot of starters that's going to be in the D tier. There's going to be a lot of starters in the A and even S tier. But Cyndaquil is definitely going to be in the D tier, unfortunately. I think there are certain cases where Typhlosion could be useful. It's definitely a spicy pick in the Ultra League. I think a lot of players tend to use it because it also has access to Solar Beam. But for myself, I would consider it a D tier. I haven't ever used Typhlosion with Blast Burn. I think it's not necessarily going to be good, and it's definitely going to be overshadowed by pretty much every other fire type starter. And then next, let's move on to Dratini. Dratini, Dratini, Dratini. This is going to be an S tier. 
I wouldn't say that Draco Meteor made any kind of major impact, but Dratini is a very powerful Pokemon, more specifically Dragonite, and Draco Meteor can be quite impactful. I think this Pokemon does benefit from Draco Meteor in certain situations. But overall, it's a very powerful Pokemon, so naturally I would consider it an S tier. It's not even going to be among the most powerful moves that you would use in PvP, but maybe for PvE it could be really good, but it also has access to Outrage. So you know what, I'm actually going to move it down to the A tier. Um, just because Draco Meteor didn't really impact the Pokemon. In fact, I would say Draco Meteor is the least ideal charge attack that you would want on Dratini. But the Community Day was really good. It's a very powerful Pokemon still. I would definitely still use it if you have any of them. So yeah, let's move on to Duskull. This is going to be a trash tier Pokemon, unfortunately. Dust Noir with the Community Day move had no impact on the game. It is probably one of the worst ghost types in the game, unfortunately. But it is still pretty cool, I guess. It's an iconic shiny, different things like that. But yeah, I wouldn't consider it anywhere above the trash tier. Next, let's move on to Eevee. The first time it was released, I would consider it a B tier. Some of the Eevee evolutions gained some tremendous power with the Community Day move, but most of them didn't really see that much of a change. I would say that the most impressive Eevee evolution is going to be Sylveon as well as Umbreon. Um, but other than those two, you really don't ever find yourself using any of the other versions. Maybe Glaceon, but I don't really know. I feel like Eevee is always going to be one of those where only certain evolutions are going to be good. But yeah, I would still say it was a good B tier community day. And then the second time around, I would say that it kind of remained the same. <laughs> they all got different moves. So the second time they did Eevee community day, all of the Eevee evolutions got a second charge attack that was considered a community day exclusive. And I would say the second time around, some of the Pokemon actually saw some significant improvements. But Overall, they weren't game they weren't game breaking. They weren't game changing. So I'm gonna consider them B tier. All right, next let's move on to Electabuzz. Um, in and of itself, very powerful Pokemon, Electivire. Like it's a very good, solid Electric type Pokemon. But in terms of the Community Day move, had no impact on this Pokemon. It was some sort of Fire type attack. Really didn't make any sense. I did not like that it received that community move. I thought there was a lot of potential for it to receive something really cool. Something to give it a lot of type coverage in PvP. But no, it didn't get a good community move. I'm going to consider it a D tier. Next, let's move on to Ghastly. Now, Ghastly's community day move, what was it? Gengar? I think it was Shadow Claw or Shadow... I don't remember. Um, no, it wasn't a ghost type move. It was Psychic. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Did really not do anything for Gengar. <laughs> Gengar already has some of the most powerful poison type and ghost type attacks. I, I don't think it needed Psychic, maybe for some sort of type coverage in PvP. I'm going to consider it a B tier, mainly because I think it was still quite impactful at the time. A lot of players were dabbling with Gengar and Psychic. I think it did do a lot for that Pokemon. But I would say that it wasn't future proof because nowadays no one really runs Gengar with Psychic. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I really do think that there was a lot of potential for it, but it's going to be a B tier. It was a very solid and very fun community day, by the way. That was pretty good. Grubbin is going to be, I'm not going to put it in the trash tier and I'll tell you why. I'm going to put it in the C tier. Um, interestingly enough, Vikavolt does have a lot of uses in PvP. And there's certainly some cases that could be made that the Community Day move was very impactful. I would say that Grubbin is one of those Pokemon where it's going to be specifically good for PvP with the entire evolutionary line. Like, at, like for example, with Duskull, like Dusk Noir has very rare uses, but Dusk, or what is it? The Dusk Noir has very rare uses, but Dusk, uh, I forgot what the, Dusklops, that's actually pretty good in PvP. The second stage, or the middle stage evolution is actually pretty good. So Dusclaw, like, you know, I think Grubbin has a huge leg up over a Pokemon like Duskull for that very reason. So yeah, I'm going to consider it a C tier. I think if there was some way for it to be good in PvE, it would be definitely a lot higher. But speaking of PvE, let's go on to Larvitar. This is going to be our first S tier. Believe it or not, Larvitar, like, I think that was one of the most hype community days. And it was definitely really early on. It was like, I think it was like the fifth or sixth community day. And it was definitely drawing a lot of excitement. I think it really solidified community days for a lot of players. 
It received the move SmackDown. Tyranitar was SmackDown. That was insanely impactful, like no pun intended. It was pretty much the best rock type for a very long time, pretty much until the release of Rampardos. And I would say that it's still arguably one of the best rock types, especially with the Mega Evolution. So I think Larvitar was definitely an S tier community day and the community day move is definitely an S tier as well. All right, let's talk about Litten. This was the most recent community day. I'm gonna put this in the D tier. Unfortunately, Incineroar with the community day move, it didn't really make it an impact. Like Blast Burn is a really strong move no matter what Pokemon gets it. But when it comes to Incineroar, I don't think the stats really help him at all. Like. <laughs> It's one of those fire type starters where you kind of want it to be very impactful, but unfortunately it does not. So yeah, unfortunately that's a D tier community day. Mo let's move on to Magikarp. This is going to be an A tier. I really like Magikarp's uh, community day move. I think uh, Gyarados is always going to be one of those very popular picks in the Go Battle League, but also in PvE it could be a very solid pick as well as a water type attacker. And the community day move certainly gave it a lot of different type coverage. I think it was, I don't exactly remember what a lot of these community moves were. I just kind of remember the impact that it had on the gameplay. But when it comes to Gyarados, it was definitely a really good community day. I'm going to put it in the A tier. Next, let's move on to Mareep. This is going to be a D tier, unfortunately. I think Ampharos had a lot of potential, and in some cases, it is actually extremely useful. Some specialty cups, it's considered top tier, and the community day move definitely gives it a lot of type coverage, but this was essentially designed specifically for its mega evolution, where it gains the dragon typing. It got dragon pulse, and I don't think that move def like gave it any kind of substance at all. So unfortunately, Ampharos, Mari, that's going to be a D tier. Next, let's move on to Ashuat, which evolves into Samurott. This one for me is going to be a B tier. Now, the reason why I say that is because of Samurott. That Pokemon was incredibly useless before this community day. Once it received uh, Hydro Cannon, it was insanely good. Like, there was a lot of people using it in PvP. The type combination of water and steel is just extremely rare, and not a lot of players know how to counter it. I would say that this is definitely going to be a solid B tier. I, I really think this community day gave it a long lasting impact. Next, let's move on to Weedle. This one I'm gonna put in the C tier. Um, Beedrill got some pretty decent community day moves. It, I think it gave it Drill Run, which is probably one of the most used moves on that Pokemon. Um, PvP, it gave it a huge bump. It definitely made it more impactful. I think a lot of players started using Beedrill and it was giving them a lot of success. So for Weedle, I'm gonna put it in the C tier. It was also, fun fact, it was my first community day Shundo that I ever got, so yeah. All right, next let's move on to the two Sandshrews. Uh, I'm gonna kind of keep them separate. I'm going to put a Lolan Sandshrew in the B tier and a regular Sandshrew in the D tier. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate. Out of these two community days, I think a Lolan Sandshrew got the most benefit like out of its move. It's one of those Pokemon that often gets used in PvP, especially in the Great League. I think that Pokemon definitely saw a bump. Regular Sandshrew, Kanto Sandshrew, unfortunately did not. I kind of was hoping it would get something good, but it did not, unfortunately. Next, let's move on to Poliwag, another recent one. I would say this one is in the... You know what? I'm going to put this in the A tier. Wow. The community move, it elevated the evolutions, Politoed and Poliwrath. Like, both of those Pokemon needed some good moves to kind of keep them at a higher tier status when it comes to PvP. And the community day moves definitely did that. I think a lot more players started using Poliwrath, and I think Poliwrath also gained some top tier status in one of the leagues. I, don't, I can't remember. I, I've been kind of out of the loop with PvP for a little bit, but I do remember Poliwag being very much impacted by its community day. But next, let's move on to Abra, one of my favorite community days, but unfortunately, in terms of the move that it got, it's going to be a C tier. I think it was one of those where it, it got a move that didn't make sense, like even when it comes to type coverage, maybe against dark types, but because Abra evolves into a squishy glass cannon, you're not really going to use it in PvP anyway. So I think a lot of players were scratching their heads. There was a lot of potential for it to receive some sort of really powerful psychic type attack, but unfortunately it did not. So unfortunately, we're gonna keep this one in the C tier. Next, let's move on to Machop. This one I'm going to put in the A tier. 
Uh, Machamp got Payback, which I don't think a lot of players use. It's kind of a niche move, and it's not considered one of the ideal moves. But depending on your team setup, it could be extremely useful. It gives that Pokemon a lot of versatility. So I'm going to put this in the E tier. I think just in general, kind of like Dratini, Machamp is a very powerful Pokemon regardless. So, you know, giving it an additional move in its move pool, that's always going to be a huge plus. Next, let's move on to Alolan Geodude. Here we go. Here is another D tier po- You know what? I'm going to throw this in the trash tier, unfortunately. Uh, Rollout was a very powerful move for Alolan Golem, but I don't think it was that impactful. It didn't make it any better in terms of PvE content, and in terms of PvP, it's- kind of relegated it to like specialty cups, unfortunately. I don't think it was anywhere else outside of that. And I think in the most cases, Alolan Graveler is going to be better anyway. So yeah, unfortunately, didn't give it much of an improvement. Next, let's move on to Chansey. This one's going to be a C tier. Uh, Chansey and Blissey are kind of niche in that they're just strictly gym defenders, right? So giving them some additional moves to defend your gyms with, I think that's going to make this Pokemon pretty valuable. So I'm going to consider it a C tier. It's not ever going to be good for PvP, unfortunately, nor is it ever going to be useful for raid battles. But in terms of gym battles, it's always going to be king. So yeah, C tier for me. Magmar is going to be in the same boat as Electabuzz. It got itself some sort of electric type move. Magmortar is already low tier when it comes to uh, fire types. I'm actually gonna throw this in the trash tier. It was just so bad. Like, I thought that Magmortar getting a really nice fire type attack would actually elevate it to top tier, but instead of doing that, they ran with this weird theme where they would give Electabuzz a fire type attack and they would give Magmar some sort of uh, electric type attack. It didn't make sense. I really didn't like it. I think it was Thunder Punch. I think there was a lot more potential for them to do something cool to make these Pokemon a lot stronger, but they decided not to do that because they wanted to be creative. Next, let's move on to Porygon. I will consider this a D tier. Didn't really see much of an impact with its community move. Porygon Z is not necessarily a very powerful Pokemon. Some people might use it for Tri-Attack, but other than that, yeah, D tier community. All right, now let's move on to the two Whoopers. I'm going to say these are both A tier, uh, and I don't know why Whooper is so much bigger than the rest, but yeah, these two received some sizable bumps in terms of how useful they became in PvP. Their community moves were made to be impactful, I feel. Like, of course, this was the debut of Paldean Wooper, so we really couldn't compare like the before and after, but Paldean Wooper was a menace in the Go Battle League. I feel like it still is. And Wooper was already really good in terms of Quagsire. Like, Quagsire was really good, and I feel like the community move made it even better. So, definitely A tier Pokemon. Totodile with Feraligator, another trash tier. I'm not even gonna get into it. For Alligator is one of those where pretty much every water type is going to be better than it. I see some people using it in the Great League, but it's to their own detriment. Some people use it in the Ultra League and they can make it make sense, but Hydro Cannon is a very powerful water type attack. Unfortunately, there's so many really good water types and most of them don't even need Hydro Cannon. Next up, we got Togetic. I'm going to put this in the A tier. Um, I feel like Togekiss is one of those Pokemon where it's always going to be a staple Pokemon, especially when it comes to PvP, and it got a community day move that I feel like it was it, it was needing for the longest time. So I really like this being here. I think A is the perfect tier for Togetic and Togekiss. Next up, let's move on to Hoppip. This one is going to be a D tier. Um, Jumpluff did receive a pretty decent community day move, but it didn't elevate it past where it was. Like. <laughs> Like, Jumpluff wasn't necessarily that great of a Pokemon. I think some players were using it here and there, but considering how many Pokemon are strong against it, I don't think it's worth ever using. So, yeah, D tier Pokemon for me. You know what? I will actually consider it a C tier because it's definitely a step up before above any of these. So, yeah. Next up, let's move on to Swinub. Now, this is going to be tricky. Because Mamoswine is by far the most powerful non-mega, non-shadow ice type in the game. Like, bar none. But the community move, Ancient Power, did literally nothing for this Pokemon. Um, I want to kind of consider it in the same tier as Dratini. Like, if Dratini is going to be in the A tier, I feel like naturally Swineup needs to be there as well. 
but I'm actually going to throw it in the B tier, mainly because this Pokemon was extremely good before the Community Day, and it's still as equally good after the Community Day. There's really no cases where you'll need Ancient Power. Even in PvP, you would rather go with High Horsepower over Ancient Power, but yeah. Torchic! Here we go. This one's going to be an S tier for me. Blaziken is a very powerful fire type Pokemon. I would even consider it a step above Charizard. Blaziken is very strong. On top of it being a very top tier fire type raid attacker and PvP Pokemon. Not necessarily for PvP, but it is so insanely strong. And right now it's considered the best when it is a Mega. Like Mega Blaziken is the top tier fire type. It's also the top tier fighting type. So. So many uses with Torchic, I'm going to kind of throw it in the S tier as part of my a little bit of a bias towards this generation, but I still think it's well deserving of being just a step up from Charmander, maybe just by a hair. So yeah. Next up, we got Mudkip. Now, everyone knows that Mudkip was probably one of the best community days because Mudkip, Swampert with Hydro Cannon, insanely powerful in all aspects of Pokemon Go. I want to consider it an S tier, but I'm actually going to throw it in the S plus tier. Yeah, it's that good. Swampert is by far one of the best Pokemon in the game. It has so many uses in both PvE and PvP content. You could use it as a top tier raid attacker for water or ground types, or you could throw it in PvP, like in all three leagues, and it's going to be insanely good. So yeah, Swampert is one of those all around really good Pokemon. It's definitely going to be an S plus tier because Hydro Cannon is the reason it is up there. Next up, let's move on to Galarian Zigzagoon. This is going to be a B tier Pokemon for me. I think some people will disagree considering that the Community Day move actually gave this Pokemon a sizable bump, but it wasn't necessarily that big, like big of a bump. I feel like Galarian Zigzagoon was uh, kind of one of those niche things like Galarian, uh, whatever, I already forgot the name of the, the final of all form, but um, Zigzagoon, Lanoon, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, I think this is a pretty solid B tier. It's kind of falling in line with the EV evolutions as well as Ghastly and Bulbasaur. I think it makes sense. Next up, let's move on to CDOT. Now, I'm going to say this is an A tier. Um, the Community Day move for Shiftry made that Pokemon a huge menace in PvP. I would say that that Pokemon was going to be the top counter for a lot of Pokemon in the top tier at the time. Not necessarily anymore, but Shiftry was a very powerful Pokemon for the longest time. I would say it's going to be an A tier because of the Community Day move that it got. And then we got Routes. Now, in terms of Synchronoise, it's not necessarily that strong on routes, but I will say that it is an A tier for much of the same reasons as Dratini and Togetic and Machop. Like, it was already a really powerful Pokemon, Gardevoir, and also um, Gallade. Like, both of those Pokemon were in extremely powerful, but the community move was kind of like a side grade. Like, it didn't add much to this Pokemon. It didn't make it a better Pokemon. Like, it just added a move to its move pool. And it's not necessarily the most ideal move that you would want on routes, but it's still a really powerful move for a lot of different cases. All right, next, let's move on to Slackoth. This one's going to be a D tier. Uh, Slackoth is... Uh, one of those Pokemon that not a lot of players care about, but when it comes to slacking, it's going to be pretty much a gym defender, just like Chansey and Plissy. But unfortunately, the community move didn't really do much to it. It was definitely stronger than what it already had, but it's still considered like a B-tier gym defender, and I don't think a lot of players use it anyway in that case, but yeah, it's going to be a D-tier for me. Now let's move on to Roselia. I think this Pokemon saw a huge sizable bump when it got its Community Day. This one's going to be an A tier as well. Roserade got two Community Day moves, and both of those moves made it extremely good for both raid battles as well as PvP. I think one of the moves was going to give it a lot more options when it comes to PvP, and the other move gave it a lot more options in terms of PvE. So I think this was one of those community days that definitely elevated this Pokemon. I think it's well deserving of an A tier. Next, let's move on to Swablu. Now, I will say this is an S tier. The reason for that is because Altaria is a very powerful PvP Pokemon. You know what? I'm actually going to throw this in the A tier. I don't know why I'm considering it an S tier. You know what? I, I'm starting to go back on Torchic. I know I'm going backwards here, but 
I'm starting to go back and forth on Torchic as I'm doing this. I feel like I have to move this back down to the A tier, unfortunately. Um, yes, it is a very powerful fighting type. It is a very powerful, um, it is very powerful fire type. But in terms of PvE or PvP, I will say that Charizard got more of an impact than Torchic. Um, I, I feel like Blaziken is one of those Pokemon where it's extremely good for PvE, but it's mediocre for PvP. So I think it balances it out. It kind of puts it on the same tier as Char Charizard. So yeah, I think, let me just check this. Yeah, this, this is starting to make sense. I might move stuff around at the end of this video because some of this stuff is starting to not make sense to me. Um, like, I'm gonna do this right now. I think Dot is good, Shifri is good, but it's not like Charizard good. And then you know what, for the things that I was saying earlier, I'm gonna bring these down to the to the B tier, uh, just because they were just side grades in terms of moves. Yeah, I, I okay, sorry, no more adjustments, let's keep this going. Swab, what's it, Swablu, yeah, Altaria. Very powerful PvP Pokemon, been top tier for the last couple of seasons. It's definitely one of those Pokemon that saw a huge upgrade with its community move, Dazzling Gleam. So this one I will keep in the A tier because in terms of PvP, huge impact on that Pokemon. All uh, right, next up, let's go to Sfeel. Yeah, this is going to be a no-brainer. Sfeel is definitely an S-tier community day. It received a community day move that made Walrein the one Pokemon that broke PvP for the longest time. Until it got nerfed, Icicle Sphere was the bane of a lot of PvPers. Like, if you were in the Great League, you had to use a Walrein or you had to find a counter that directly countered Walrein. It was insane. The amount of people that complained about this one Pokemon and this one community day, it was crazy. I, I really feel like this one Pokemon saw one of the biggest jumps in relevance in out of one community day out of all of these Pokemon, <laughs> seriously. Like even Tyranitar was a Pokemon that a lot of players were using even beforehand, but no one cared about Spiel or any of its evolutions. But once Walrein got those community day moves, it was suddenly like the most powerful Pokemon in PvP. And it still considered is. Like, a lot of people still use Walrein in the Master League as well as the Great League, and also the Ultra League. Like, it's a very powerful Pokemon. So yeah, definitely deserving of being an S tier. All right, let's keep this moving. We got Bagon. I'm going to kind of speed through these. I will consider this an A tier. Um, it received Outrage. Made it one of the top tier dragon type attackers. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it in the A tier. Next, let's go to Chimchar. This one's going to be trash. No one cares about Chimchar and its lines, unfortunately. Beldum, oh my gosh, this is going to be S plus tier. Let me stop and talk about Beldum for a second. Metagross with Meteor Mash, the best steel type in the game. Insanely good for PvP, top tier for PvE content when it comes to dragon type counters as well as fairy type counters. 100% this is going to be S plus tier. It's definitely up there with Mudkip and Swampert receiving Hydro Cannon. Meteor Mash, M Metagross, it's in insane. Like, if you do not have that Pokemon, like, you need to get one right away. That should be high priority. Next up, let's go to Starly. This one's going to be, I'm going to throw this in the B tier, um, mainly because of Shadow Star Raptor. That's the Pokemon that actually saw the most benefit from the community move. Unfortunately, regular Star Raptor is still going to be about a mid-tier flying type rate attacker, so yeah, wouldn't consider that any good. All right, next let's move on to another S-tier Pokemon, Gibble. This is so self-explanatory. Um, Garchomp with Earth Power is so insanely good. A lot of people use it in PvP. It's considered top tier when it comes to PvE. I almost want to make the argument that it is S plus tier, but I'm going to keep it in the S tier. So insanely good. Like, if you do not have yourself a Garchomp with uh, Earth Power, you should definitely prioritize that. It's definitely going to be impactful. I highly suggest trying to get one as soon as possible, whether through trades or, you know, maybe hopefully it'll get a Community Classic sometime soon. All right, next up, we got Tepig. Um, just like Incineroar with Litten, didn't really do anything for that Pokemon, unfortunately. Gonna be a D tier. And then we got Snivy. Now, I'm going to say this is C tier for much of the same reasons as Chikorita. Um, Superior is a niche Pokemon when it comes to the Great League, but it's quite a niche. Like, it has access to some very powerful attacks. And I would say that Frenzy Plant is definitely going to elevate it into a top tier grass type uh, PvPer. 
So yeah, for the same reasons as Menagium, definitely deserving of a C tier. All right, let's finish this up. We're coming across the end here. So let's go to Rock and Rolla. This is going to be a trash tier. Uh, I really cannot say this Pokemon had any kind of impact from its community day move. It's still a trash Pokemon and it's continuing to be trash even after the community day move. Now Litwick is going to be C tier. Uh, Chandler is a very powerful Pokemon in its own right. But the move that it got, I think it was Poltergeist. That is actually a worse move for this Pokemon. It's kind of like with Tratini with Draco Meteor. But at least with Draco Meteor, some would argue that it's kind of a side grade. Like it can be useful in some situations. But with Poltergeist, not necessarily so. Like Chandler is a very powerful Pokemon, but it definitely does not benefit from its community move. Now let's move on to Dino. Oh my gosh, this is another S tier Pokemon. It's uh, probably for the same reasons as Gibble. I think Hydreigon with its community move made it insanely strong as a dark type attacker. And the fact that it also has the dragon typing also gives it plenty of different uses. Hydreigon is very strong and it got the same kind of impact that I would say that Garchomp got with Earth Power. Yeah, definitely an S tier community. Aksu is going to be A tier, mainly because I think it received Outrage. I don't know what it got, but it definitely made Hydra, uh, what is it? Whatever it evolves into, uh, it made it that much stronger. So I will consider it A tier. Chespin, this is going to be, uh, you know what? I'm going to put this in the B tier, I think. Yeah, B tier seems good. Like. It was not necessarily that good in terms of Chestnut, like it wasn't a great Pokemon in any area of Pokemon Go, but it certainly saw some uses in PvP after it got its community day move. I would say in the same level as Alolan Sandshrew, yeah. So definitely makes sense for this to be a B tier. I think it's not going to be lone there. Uh, let's move on to Fennekin. This one's going to be a D tier. Once again, same like Litten, same like Tepig. They didn't really see that much of an improvement. I think some people might say Delphox is a lot better with Blastburn. I totally agree with that. But yeah, other than, you know, I, I just can't see anyone justifying using it over, let's say, like Charizard or, you know, pretty much every other fire type that's considered top tier. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to be a D tier. Uh, next, let's move on to Noibat. Yeah, once again, another trash tier, <laughs> unfortunately. The move that it got did not make it any better, Boom Burst. It's always been considered like kind of like a niche pick, but with Boom Burst, it made it kind of worse, I would say. So yeah, Froakie, oh boy. This is another A tier, I will say. Uh, Greninja was always really strong uh, in some ways, but with Hydro Cannon, that made it pretty much one of the best water types in PvP. Definitely considered an A tier in my book. Next, let's move on to Fletchling. Yeah, another E tier. The reason for that is because Fletchling evolves into Talonflame. Talonflame, with its community move, makes it one of the best Great League as well as Ultra League Pokemon that you could use. Why do I say that? Well, let's talk about the Ultra League. Uh, a Talonflame that you fully max out if it's 100% is going to be just under the combat points limit for the Ultra League. I think it's at like 24, 94 or 92. That makes it really good. It means it's going to have the highest stats in, among all the Ultra League Pokemon and it's also going to have a very powerful moveset where you need specific Pokemon in order to counter it, specifically Swampert, so yeah. All right, next let's move on to Rowlet. Unfortunately, it's going to be a D tier. I don't think uh, Decidui, um, a Decidui, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't think that Pokemon saw any kind of sizable bumps with Frenzy Plant, uh, unfortunately. It's, you know, going to pale in comparison to some of the grass types that are out there, especially Venusaur with Frenzy Plant, Kartana. Yeah, I don't think this Pokemon is that good, unfortunately. Next we got Stuffle, same deal, it's going to be a D tier. There's going to be a lot of Pokemon that got Community Days that are either going to be kind of near the Trash tier or kind of near the S tier. It's kind of weird that um, there's not much that you would kind of consider a C tier, but in any case, Stuffle, not really good. I, I don't think the Community Day did anything for that Pokemon. Beware is not really a useful Pokemon, and even with the Community Day move, still not a useful Pokemon. 
All right, now we got the first ever community day that we've ever gotten. This one, I'm gonna put in this C tier, just for the iconography of it. Like, Pikachu is obviously a Pokemon that no one's going to use in any aspect of Pokemon Go, maybe for the Little Cup or something like that. But, you know, for the sake of collecting, for the sake of it being Pikachu, we can't put it in the trash tier. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. All right, next up we got Piplup which evolves into Empoleon. I think this Pokemon is in the same level as, where are you? Oshawott. I'm gonna put them right next to each other. A lot of the same reasons why Oshawott saw vast improvements, I would say Piplup got the same vast improvements. It also evolves into a Steel and, oh actually, now that I think about it, does Samurott actually evolve into a Steel? Is Samurott actually Steel and Water? Maybe it's Empoleon. Well, anyway, Empoleon. Wow, very powerful Pokemon for the Ultra League. I think this Pokemon saw sizable improvements. It's definitely a B tier. Next up, we got Shinx. This is trash tier. Unfortunately, for those who are big fans of Shinx, as an electric type, not really good. Maybe for PvP, it could be useful. Again, only in like one or two specialty cups. Uh, overall, I wouldn't consider investing into Luxray. It's not a good Pokemon at all, even with the community move. All right, but next we got Rhyhorn. Now, Rhyhorn is going to be A tier without question. Rhyperior with Rock Wrecker is going to be phenomenally good. It's not going to be the absolute best Rock type raid attacker, but it's definitely up there. And on top of that, Rhyperior is one of those Pokemon that is quite a menace when it comes to the Go Battle League. Definitely with Rock Wrecker as well. You're going to completely decimate Pokemon like well, let's say Charizard, Talonflame. Those are some of the Pokemon that it shares the A slot with. But yeah, Rhyperior is phenomenally good with Rock Wrecker. I would definitely consider it an A tier. Maybe an S tier, but I would say that it didn't have the same kind of level of impact that Walrein, any of these, you know, that like they got. But yeah, so A tier for that. Next, let's move on to the two slow pokes. I'm gonna throw them both in the B tier. Or in, yeah, and I don't know why Slowpoke looks so big. It's kind of got the same thing going on here with Wooper. I guess they just, you know, yeah, I don't know. But in any case, B tier Pokemon, they saw some sizable bumps when PvP, but in PvE, still not useful. Quite unfortunate. All right, now here's something that's very tragic. Squirtle is going to be in the D tier. Among all of the starters, I will say that Squirtle Blast burn, oh, what is it? Blastoise, not Blast Burn. Blastoise with Hydro Cannon had so much tremendous potential, but unfortunately, the stats just don't back it up. So it's unfortunately going to be a D tier. I feel like in terms of the Kanto starters, it's definitely the weakest out of the three, but that's unfortunate because Squirtle is a very popular starter and I'm sure there's a lot of players who would want it to be somewhere up here. There are some cases where you could use Blast Burn, sure, like, like Blast Burn. I keep saying Blast Burn. There are some cases where you could use Blastoise with Hydro Cannon. I think in some PvP Cups, it's going to be really good. I think at the Ultra League, it could be a spicy pick. But yeah, considering that there's Swampert out there, I, I don't think there's ever a case where you would ever use Blastoise over Swampert. All right, next let's move on to the last five. Now, I'm not going to go in order here. I kind of want to save some of them for last. Let's go to Turtwig. Turtwig, I'm going to put in the C tier. Um, I will say that Torterra is a decently strong Pokemon, but it didn't really receive a sizable bump. But it kind of falls in line with uh, Snivy and Chikorita in terms of PvP. Uh, not necessarily in the Great League, although some people will use it in the Great League. I will say for the Ultra League, like Torterra actually got a pretty decent bump. I think Venusaur is always going to be far superior in terms of the Ultra League, but I still think Torterra has a lot of good uses. I will very easily put it in the C tier. Next up, let's move on to, let's uh, let's put Teddy Ursa in here somewhere. I'm gonna put Teddy Ursa in the C tier. Um, in order to get Teddy Ursa's uh, fully evolved form, Ursa Luna, like you have to evolve it during a full moon, which is kind of weird. Um, totally makes sense, but also kind of weird. Uh, but it's pretty decent. Like, I would say that that Pokemon is kind of underrated. Like, especially with the community move. Like, there are some uses where you would use Ursaluna. I'm gonna put in the C tier for that reason. Uh, it could have been in the D tier or trash tier, but I think that Pokemon is quite underrated, especially when it comes to ground types. 
All right, next let's move on to Timber. Now Timber didn't really receive a sizably good community move, I would say. It actually received a community move that really wasn't even an upgrade. It was just kind of there. Uh, but still, it's a very powerful Pokemon. One of the best fighting types in the game. So B tier for that, much for the same reasons as Tratini and Routes. All right, next let's move on to Trap Inch. This one is going to fall in line with the B tier. Lots of B tiers, very mid communities. Not trash, not great, just completely mid. That seems to be the theme with a lot of communities. Trap Inch is going to be a B tier. Earth Power was a sizable upgrade for Flygon, but I will say that there's just so many Pokemon that do exactly what Flygon does, but a lot better, namely Garchomp. So yeah, unfortunately for Flygon fans, it's going to be another mid-tier community. And finally, we're at the very end. Let's see where we're going to put Trico. I want to put it in the A tier, but once again, it's a B tier. Yeah, Sir, um, no, not Superior. Um, Trico's fully evolved form. Wow, I'm completely baking, blinking on it. Uh, uh, Grovile, and then... Uh, uh, Sceptile. Sceptile. There we go. Yeah, Sceptile. Very powerful Grass-type Pokemon. Best Pokemon in the game when it comes to Mega Evolutions and Grass-types. It's even better than Venusaur, but that's pretty much it. It's not going to be in PvP by any means. It's PvE specific, and only when you Mega Evolve it. But when you do Mega Evolve it, it's insanely strong. So, yeah. Because of that, I wouldn't consider it an A tier. It does have a strong impact on PvE, much like Tyranitar, but even non-Mega Evolved Tyr Tyranitars are going to be good. Non-Mega Evolved Sceptiles, not necessarily. Like, in some cases, it could be good, but there's so many powerful non-Mega Pokemon that you would use instead of Sceptile. Yeah, it's going to be a B tier, but in any case. There you have it, everyone. I don't think I'm going to make any edits. I kind of wanted to move stuff around, but now that I'm looking at it, this does make total sense. Maybe I could throw Axew down here, uh, but I'm gonna keep it in the A tier. I think this is all really good. Uh, yeah, the trash tier Pokemon, these are Pokemon that you should never really care about in terms of their community moves. Maybe some of these Pokemon will have some uses in PvP, but very rarely. These Pokemon are pretty solid uh, for a lot of various reasons. These Pokemon are pretty much in the middle, you know, doesn't matter, like, <laughs> whether or not you're going to use them or not. Like, some of them are going to be somewhat useful, some of them are not, but they're all in the mid. These are really good. I would say that these are ones worth investing into, especially for the PvP Pokemon. Some of them are good for both PvE and PvP. And then, of course, the S tier. These are phenomenal Pokemon. I will say Walrein did get a lot of nerfs, so maybe you could bump it down to the A plus tier, or the A tier, rather but I still think it's really good. Some people still use Walrein. It's definitely gonna get you ahead in all the leagues in Pokemon Go. So yeah, I think it's deserving an S tier. And these are must builds. Like, you know, Swampert is so phenomenal. And then of course, Metagross is the best, the only good Steel type in my opinion. Yeah, this makes total sense. So there you have it. This is my tier list for every single community day that we've had up until this point. And I think a lot of you may disagree with this list, and that totally is understandable, considering that everyone has different experiences. Some people absolutely do not care about PvP. Some people only care about PvP. And your tier list is going to be very different. Or it's going to be very similar, I do not know. But in any case, I would love to know what changes you would make to this tier list down below in the comments. I would like to know that. Uh, what would you change around? Do you think... Like, I don't know, Delphox is underrated, and it's more deserving to be in the B tier. I don't know. Definitely share why in the comments, and let's have a great discussion. And thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. If you ended up enjoying it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And also don't forget that little bell so you can stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. Now I want to give a quick shout out to every single patron on my Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support the Conscience Little channel, the best way you could do so is by clicking on the links in the description below. One of them will take you to my Patreon page, and if you become a paid Patreon member, you will get a permanent spot on my in-game Pokemon Go friends list. And if you want to play Pokemon Go with me, then all you have to do is become a Patreon member, and we could do remote raids together, we could level up our friendship levels together. The only way that is possible is if you become a Patreon supporter. Now, if you want to support my channel in a different way, you could do so by following me on social media. My handle is at Count and I'm on the platforms that you see on screen. 
And yeah, with that said, that's going to be it. I'm Kanjinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.